We're standing somewhere in the Ilaho River watershed. Uh, directly behind us is a stand of trees. On the other side of that stand of trees is the Ilaho River. What we're looking at here is a lower valley bottom stream flowing through, that comes down out of the forest and flows through this huge clear cut. It's a meandering stream and it averages anywhere between three and five meters in width. And as you can see from the devastation behind me, there is not a single tree left standing along this creek. This is extremely disappointing. Um, we haven't yet been able to determine whether there are in fact fish in this stream, but this stream is very typical of mountain cutthroat trout streams. Um, even if there are no fish in there, the values of this stream to the wildlife of this area would be phenomenal. I'd hate to think of the numbers of species that have lost their homes as a result of the absolute unconscionable destruction of this stream environment behind me. We'll go down a little bit closer and take a look and I'll show you instances where trees have been felled directly into the stream channel, where streams have been yarded across the stream channel resulting in stream bank destabilization. And a quick pan of this area, you'll see the amount of logging debris that is still left within the wetted channel of the stream. There are directly behind me two, three successive blockages of the stream channel that are a result of logs being literally dragged across the stream channel and the underbrush and the branches and the tops and the shattered, <laughs> the shattered pieces of limbs and trunk rolling down along with the log right into the stream causing stream blockages and this is resulting in channel diversions which would ultimately result in high suspended sediment load downstream as a result of stream bank erosion. And we're going to see a lot of damming debris dams as material moves downstream during flood events, gets deposited in a quiet area, forms a stream blockage, forcing the stream out of its natural channel. And oh, I would say in about five years, what we're going to see here is a small stream that was once dominated by small treed islands and uh, slopes that were held together by trees and stumps with lots of organic soil. Uh, a perfect and beautiful, wondrous wildlife corridor that supported thousands of species, including insects, birds, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals, uh, will now be, uh, despite the fact that it's a low, uh, a low energy environment, uh, these erosive processes will still take place. And we come back here five years from now, and what we'll probably see is a single large gravel bar. As I was saying when we were standing up on the road, we were looking at a stream situation where this beautiful little three to five meter wide stream flowing through this valley, just meandering along uh, in a beautifully forested uh, section with, with the cedars that were four to five feet around at the base. And uh, what we're looking at now is the result of uh, clear cutting that stream. Uh, directly across the stream there, there is a uh, stump and you can tell from the angle of the cut of the stump exactly where that tree fell. It was felled directly across the stream channel. Uh, right here behind me, in the middle of the stream, is a massive, massive pile of logging debris causing basically a, a complete blockage. If there were fish in this stream, it's unlikely they'd get above this point. Uh, what has happened here is logs have been yarded down off of the slope behind us uh, and dragged through the underbrush and the branches have broken off and the uh, split timbers from trees that have fallen over and shattered uh, have basically rolled underneath the log as they drag it across the stream and all of this material has been deposited directly in the stream bank. You can see right behind me here this clean spot of land that runs up this way is where one log, one such log, was dragged down off of this slope uh, and right down through and across the stream channel and up over to the other side where it's yarded up to the road. What we're going to see over the long term here is uh, any of this debris that is unstable and probably a lot of it is because it is fairly small when the stream levels rise in a flood condition, not if they rise, but when they rise, they most certainly will rise. Uh, much of this woody debris will be elevated, floated downriver, and in the process of moving downstream will fo form debris jams, will form complete stream blockages, will form 
cause channel diversions where whole new channels will be eroded through the soil uh, and will result in stream bank destruction as the material moves downstream and basically impacts on the stream bank and turns and, uh, and points in the river where the, where the stuff is carried to the stream. Uh, we can see over on the left bank facing downstream on the other side there an exposed chunk of mineral soil where trees have been logged, yarded across the stream and have basically pulled back all the vegetation at that point. And in the process of logging this stream we've seen a destruction of a complete ecosystem. This used to be a very well shaded uh, area that were cool in the summertime, warm in the wintertime, ample water for wildlife to drink, uh, lots of skunk cabbage, just a perfect environment for grizzly bears coming out of spring hibernation, uh, reptiles, amphibians, birds, insects thrived in this environment. This was a major migration corridor for animals. We still see the odd bear print down through here, but uh, it's at least less likely that an animal will choose this, this, this route now that it gets exposed and it's out in the open. Uh, and uh, we've got logging roads running across the top here where hunters can come by and sit back in their lawn chairs and suck their beer and shoot the animals as they go across the clear cuts. Uh, this is totally uncalled for. This stream should have been protected. This, in fact, this entire valley bottom at this point should not have been touched, considering what we've seen in terms of environmental devastation on the upper slopes here. Why was this area logged? Why was it allowed to be logged? Um, there is absolutely no reason for it. This is the kind of environment that needs to be protected.